Welcome back to the Keeper Corner. Last week, we talked about Alyssa Nair and how she is still developing her game later into her career. This week, we're talking about a young goalkeeper with the men's national team, Gaga Sonina, or as he's more popularly known, Gabriel. Now, Sonina is a young goalkeeper who's been in with Chelsea. He's on, out on loan with Oypen right now. And there's been a lot of discussion on what his future is and if he's going to be with the men's national team, the U23s. Um, I'm going to focus today mostly on his potential. Now, that's obviously kind of a nebulous thing, but I think there are three things that really are important for Sonina's track forward here to see if he can reach his full potential. The first one we're going to talk about today is psychosocial skills. Now, if you're a baseball fan, you've maybe heard about the five tools that make up a player. Uh, something similar in goalkeeping circles. There's kind of these foundational aspects and pillars that make up a goalkeeper. Uh, and they are technical, tactical athleticism, psychological, and social. And sometimes those last two get grouped in together as they deal with the mentality of the game. Um, but if you followed Sonina's season uh, with Oypen, you'll know that it's not going very well. They are currently in the midst of a relegation battle, and there's a big reason why uh, they can't score goals. They have scored one goal in their last eight league matches, and the last time they scored more than one goal in a game uh, was October 28th, 2023. So clearly a goalkeeper in this situation is just going to struggle with the psychological and social aspect, especially being a young goalkeeper. And let me show you an example. So we're going to look at the first goal from their last league game. They lost this game 4-0, but I thought this first goal was really interesting. Watch the center back number 25 drop on this counter. He drops, drops, drops. He's almost inside the six when he heads this ball away. And then, of course, the rebound, unfortunately, finds itself in the net. So Nina probably has this covered here. And this play really stood out to me because there seems to be some disconnect, not only in the play. That's an odd position for a center back to take to protect the goal. But also after the play, the players don't even want to look at each other. Everyone's really, really frustrated, specifically number 25. And so Nina, very big, clear disconnect, which isn't all that, you know, crazy to see, uh, considering it's been a frustrating season, frustrating goal. But now look 10 minutes ahead at the 19th minute mark here. Bad turnover from the exact same center back. Probably still bit in his head off the play. Maybe some from the season. It's hard to really say. That said, Sonini does his job, makes a save. This is It's a team sport, right? Fine save would be kind of a bad goal if he gets that up. But the thing that really stood out to me is watch number three come in. Nice little pat on the, on the shoulder here. Goes over 25. Uh, probably says something like, hey, you know, we got this. Don't worry about it. Now watch Sonia go to reach number 25. And again, disconnect, right? There's no eye. They don't even want to. He, he doesn't want to look at his goalkeeper. Um, and this is part of that psychological, social aspect with inside the sport. Now, it's really tough to say what's actually going on here, right? There's a million things that could be adding to this. Maybe it's just a frustrating season, and that's it. Maybe there's stuff off the field. Maybe they have uh, someone in the staff that's just sucking the life out of all the players, and now it's blowing over. Maybe there's divisions in the locker room. Maybe there's just stuff off the field that isn't anyone's fault. It's really hard to put blame and sort of this sort of thing. From a computer screen, it's impossible for me or for you to really weigh in on this, of what this really means or what's feeding into this or where this is going. You go back and look at uh, fellow Amer American goalkeeper Tyler Miller's time overseas. It wasn't very good. I'm guaranteeing you he has stories from this that just don't really see the light of day, just don't get to the public. So the reason I'm bringing all this up is, again, we can't really weigh in too much on these specific moments with Sonina. However, coaches are going to want to know what happened here? What was going on? Was Sonina adding to the problem? Or was he really alleviating a lot of it and doing the best of what he could? This sort of stuff is going to determine his ceiling, not only from an opportunity standpoint, from it, but also from his quality. If he's a type of player that can alleviate problems, his team's going to play better. He's going to play better. But if he's the type of goalkeeper that's going to add problems in and snowball mistakes, not only will his opportunities shrink because coaches don't want to work with that, but also, again, he and his team are going to struggle. So, Hard to say exactly on these specific moments. Again, frustrating season, but this is going to be a crucial aspect for any young goalkeeper, but especially Sonina in this situation. The second thing we're going to talk about today is a very technical and very specific aspect to Sonina's game. Uh, it is the 12 to 18 yard shot. Uh, and this is something very specific here. If the shot gets in tighter, you're looking at more reflexes. If it gets a little bit farther out, how you respond to it, you're going to have some time to, to do with it as you wish. So in this range here, you need to be hyper efficient because that ball's coming in about half a second, sometimes less, sometimes more. And the footwork is of the utmost importance. And so Nina is doing something that I think is a little counterintuitive and not maximizing his efficiency. Notice his lead step here a lot of times ends up coming in. And I think this is a product of 
kind of his mental and physical prep to the moment. A lot of times his shoulders are leaning forward. He's putting, he's looking for a lot of power when he's actually got some time to work with. But because he's taking these big hops or this, he's leaning forward or he's looking to get a lot of power when he actually needs a lot of agility, uh, he ends up killing his footwork and notice this right foot a lot of times comes in to push out. Um, again, and these tight reflex smaller ranges from really anything under 12, understandable. You know, you don't have the time to move your feet. But for something farther out, especially stuff at or past 18, uh, this is something you're going to move your feet for. And in general here, it's just he needs to be hyper efficient across the board. So this is a very specific thing I'm pointing out here. But in general, he needs to be hyper efficient. So think about if he's losing two tenths of a second because he's behind on the play for whatever reason, and that shot is coming in at half a second, that's 40%. That shot has now basically gone from top of the 18 to around the penalty spot. And that's a big difference. Uh, so maximizing those footworks, max maximizing mechanics is going to be crucial for Sonina getting to that next level, again, reaching potential. If any goalkeeper is not maximizing their efficiency and technical ability, there's going to be lowered ceiling. The last thing we're going to talk about is multitasking, which is largely under the tactical component, but somewhat of the mentality, psychological aspect as well. Um, but we want to think about goalkeeping as it being the antithesis to the sport. Whatever is happening on the field, goalkeepers are trying to be the killjoy and prevent that from happening. So let's take a look at a breakaway of how Sonina responds to an unfortunate situation that he now has to solve. So we're going to look at this breakaway as kind of a speed chess sort of thing. They have a turn, we have a turn, they have a turn, we have a turn. So the first turn here is a, a nice little flick from the striker to get past the center back here. So Nina responds by dropping in the space. So once again, the center backs aren't really helping out. So Nina, but he wisely drops in the space, right? You can easily get chipped and small touch here. So he continues to drop. But this is kind of where you get into the tactical weighing of options here. Because Sonina has dropped in so, so deep. And there is a defender kind of putting some pressure on the play. This actually opens up a couple options for Sonia. Could he stay out a bit more and gamble on? Well, I don't think the chip is really going to be an option, especially on touch two or three. Can he take a little bit more space? So now that the slotted ball is either something that's more preventable from him or discouraged or disincentivized because there is becoming a tighter, smaller pressure. You can see from this touch here, the striker ends up taking a bit of a favorable touch because he sees the goalkeeper ends up dropping into the goal here. That's probably a six, seven, eight yard touch. And then he takes even another touch after that because Sonina is so deep. How does the striker respond to this if Sonina is playing up a little bit so that, yes, the chip maybe is a little viable, but considering where his weight is, the speed of the play, the defender coming in, it's going to be tricky. Whereas so Nina kind of opts for sitting in really deep and giving a lot of space to the striker and letting him kind of do. So again, going back to the speed chess scenario. So Nina's basically just made one move while this striker has made three, four, five, six. And now the strikers are getting an advantage on the play. This is a very, very difficult and a very high complex situation. One false step really kind of ends up putting the goalkeeper in a bad spot. So this is a bad situation. Can we not make it worse? Can we help our team a little bit on this one? It's probably still a goal at the end of the day, so I'm not faulting Sonina on the play. However, from a multitasking aspect, this is kind of what we're talking about. Can I show one more breakaway really to drive this point home? But again, the center backs aren't really helping Sonina out a whole lot. However, this is kind of a, a favorable position to solve in some sense, much more so than the previous one here. Notice as the ball goes wide, so Nina decides to come down the line. Now, this defender is coming in, and the goal has shrunk a little bit from this angle. So in some sense, so Nina can choose to sit in here, and that is a bit of a distance for him to come down. But he comes out looking for the big spread here, trying to get big, trying to put pressure on the striker, which is understandable. But considering that any lateral options are probably going to be tough for a pass here, this is probably something in hindsight that Sonina can sit in on, especially considering how this ball just goes straight down the middle. That striker is probably going to shoot one way or another. Maybe he cuts back, but then you've got that midfielder stepping in. However, Sonina opts to go put pressure on the line, and his body shape is a little out of sorts. He ends up running into his own player as he comes through. And this, again, is kind of the multitasking of him thinking, okay, where are the percentages? Where are the odds on this sort of stuff? If he can think about this sort of stuff at a high, high level, he's going to play at a high level. If he is going to struggle with this sort of stuff and only have one solution of either only dropping in or only being aggressive and not having some nuance into his game, he's going to have a lower ceiling. 
these are just three areas that really stood out to me in Sonina's game. I, there are a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of areas of goalkeeping. And we certainly can go into more examples of things we've already talked about or more examples of other things. So this is not an all encompassing review of Sonina's game, but I do want to showcase how difficult it is to play at a high level, how difficult it is to really be Chelsea's number one and what potential really looks like and kind of showing some great areas in between. So again, Sonia's potential, tough to say, but I can confidently say these three areas at the very least will play a factor into it, along with, again, all the other ones at the same time. That's it today for Gaga Sonina, who apparently is in his Bond villain phase, but we love to see it. It's exciting times for him, uh, not only with a relegation battle, see what we can do for Oipen, but in his overall potential, see what he can do with the men's national team as well. So leave a comment below. Tell me what you thought about it. Uh, do you agree? Do you disagree? Did I miss something in the videos? Do I miss something big about his game? Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think.